Why, it's James Bond as I live and breathe. How are you, old chap? <laughs> it's your old friend, Dr. Andrew Michaels, from Chicago, Illinois. Well, it's so good to see you at last. How have you been? Well, I don't mind if I do. I'll join you for a pint. Ah, yes. Mmm, Guinness Stout. Nothing like it to wet the whistle, as they say. Oh, I've brought along my briefcase. Yes, I did. Full of goodies for you and Q, of course. Let me lower the tone of my voice a little bit. It's so good to see you again, James. You look so dashing. Has it been since Cyprus? We haven't seen each other since Cyprus. Oh, oh, glory days. But of course, you got the worst of it. Those Atard twins were incredible, to say the least. They gave you a good rogering, I know that. <laughs> well, let me get into my gift bag of goodies and show you some of my knickknacks as you would say, for the spy espionage business. I know I miss the OSS days myself. Of course, they have me attached to the Department of Navy. Uh, Navy. Um, yes, of course, I was disciplined for that little thing with Roald Dahl, but that's all in the past. I still can't believe she left Gary Cooper for that man. To think he was spying on us, your most staunchest ally during the war. James... Politics and bureaucrats, they'll, they'll be the death of us, won't they? Of course. I brought my notes. I've always prepared, James. You know that. You know me well. So you're part of the newly formed MI6, I take it. Ah, one of Churchill's last directives. Of course. I preferred the OSS myself. I am loosely connected with the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, which is filling up rapidly with those bureaucrats that I spoke of earlier. <laughs> I have something very interesting to show you and, and M. Let me see if I have it. Oh, I carry it on me for personal reasons. I'm in disguise. I'm trying to do my best British accent, so none of the locals can tell that I'm an American. They probably think I'm a whacked out crazy Jerry. <laughs> you never know. My first object is this poisoned pen. You pull off the cap, and the first button shoots a most dangerous poison into the person. The second button fires a missile. It's a very small missile, about the size of a twenty-two rifle round. And, of course, if you press down both buttons in the cap and count to ten, you can throw it, and it has a very small explosive device in it. Or you can put it in the hinge or the lock of a door mechanism, set the bomb to explode, count to ten, plus five, you know, because you have to throw it, and it will blow up the lock or the hinge to get you out of a sticky wicket, as they say. <laughs> and it also is a very good buy roll pen. I use it all the time. I haven't poisoned anybody yet. <laughs> and it has this protective cover so that you don't accidentally poke yourself and cause yourself a mischief. You wouldn't want that. Can I put you an MI6 on for a small order of these? And of course, we always envision the great Q modifying our inventions for your own purposes. Yes. Okay. I will write that order down. It's so good to 
speak to you again, James. We've been through so much together. Well, you know how those Greek girls are. They're so ornery. But don't come between them and their mother. Oh my goodness. The fights that ensued when you were captured at the Atard estate. <laughs> if the queen could see you then. <laughs> So that's a gross. I will have them shipped out right away. Airmail, of course. Nice and safe and functional. All right, the next device I have to show you is a personal favorite of mine. It's gotten me out of trouble quite a few times. Now, it's a prototype. X-ray glasses. Now, with these X-ray glasses, you can see through human body tissues by changing the setting and you can see if a person has a wire implant inside their body. You scan them with this by adjusting it with the touch over here. So I can see right through your body to see if you have any electrical implants or devices in your anatomy. And you can lower the setting so that it only removes the person's clothes to see if they were carrying weapons underneath uh, their clothing. Um, as you know, I am a married man, James, and a, and a, a very, very, very serious married man. But uh, if you wear these too often and, and hang around the, the secretaries, uh, I'm sure there will be talk. So we know what kind of a playboy you have become. <laughs> so it would not help to hang around the uh, secretary's pool at the office with these on. And of course, I already have told many Penny if she sees you walking up with this prototype on, to uh, of course keep a lead shield handy. <laughs> I didn't want to spoil all the fun. What kind of discovery would there be if everyone used these? <laughs> so can I put you down for a gross of those, James? Yes, of course. We will be selling you them for experimentation purposes. We're hoping M can come up with a more compact, economical design for us. Yes. So, two dozen should do it. Okay. All right. Now, the third device is not that highly technical, but it is a zoom microphone. Now, what this does is you can point it at a object set for the distance with these controls on the side and you can zone in and it will also feed into a device by plugging into the bottom and you can use that input to see the distance range as well as record what the enemy is saying. It also helps you triangulate where an enemy position is. So this is a new listening device, and it works very well. Uh, it has these cooler vents on it to prevent it from overheating. So, yes, I will put you down for some of those. Okay, I should just keep my pen out. But I worry so. Oh, yes. oh no, I'm fine. Ah, so refreshing. I see you're still drinking your martinis. Okay, so that's three devices. And let me see what else I have in my bag of goodies for Sir Hugh. Ah, oh, yes. The next device I have in my bag, the utmost importance. Now, it will look very simple. It's a disguise element. It looks like a very simple 
eye covering, a pirate's eye patch, but inside is the most ingenious and tiny of spy cameras that activates with the clicking of your eye. And it uses microfilm. If you're familiar with that, storages, here, try this on. Let me know how that works for you. Okay, do you get it on? There you go. Okay. I'm sure we can put you down for some of those. Try it. Blink your eyes a few times. Do you think it's working? Very good. Well, let me get out my stenographer's pad and we'll talk um, about shipping purposes and expediency. Really? That many? My goodness. How do you ever get enough rest? James, you're going to do yourself a mischief. Well, this newly formed MI6, I hope it works for you, James. I understand, James. It's very important to know what you're dealing with on a regular basis. Yes, of course. And it's important to know that what we're dealing with right now is very active. And that's why I came to see you today. I've dealt with these kind of spy devices in the past. And when they're active, they can be remotely detonated, like this pen of mine. It can be remotely detonated at certain times, like if it's discovered, your location, and you do not want to give up any information, you can have it remotely detonated, you know, to end your existence, as to say, kill yourself to prevent state secrets from falling into the wrong hands. You would understand that, James. So these devices can be remotely set off. So it's important that if they are discovered, they may be let off. And this one, of course, would cause immediate death if it exploded at a close range. You see what I'm saying, James? So, um, it's important that we stay as calm as we can while I divulge all of these state secrets to you, James. Yes, um, I'm going to give you a lot of state secrets. So, it's very important that uh, you remain as calm as possible while I prepare um, the rest of the state secrets I'm going to give you. So, just lean in so I can whisper it into your ear. Okay. James, 
James. James Bond. Can you hear me? Let me remove that eye patch. James Bond, can you hear me? There you are. James, I've got a small window here. You gotta try and remain as calm as possible. Okay. okay, James, what happened was I'm inspecting your eye. Hold still. Whatever you do, hold still. Okay. James, the device has been neutralized in your eye. But only for a short time period. We have to get the eye out. Okay. You're in a lot of danger, James. If that device comes back on, it's going to blow you up. They implant them in people cause a spontaneous human combustion. You'll turn into a human torch. Try to remain as still as you can. I, could, I discovered it when I showed you my prototype x-ray glasses. That's when I saw it. I could see the electronic signature from it. Grab it. It's going to hurt. I'm going to take a little tissue with me. I got it. It's out. I'm all right. Just sit there. Don't move. I didn't even have, have time to put my rubber gloves on. I had to get it out before it was too late. Let's get that patched up. No, it's nothing. It's my, oh. No, I'm not having a heart attack. I don't care what Churchill did. I'm not having a heart attack. I'm not like him. Hold still. Can you just hold still, James? I'm fine. Let me get that patched up. This device will... Uh, this device will seal up the area. Just fine. All right, let's get you up. All right, hold still. <clears throat> the last thing I need is you worrying about me, James. It's just something I ate. I'm on medication for it. It'll be all right. Okay. Now listen. This is very important. I came across 
one of these devices in a person in the United States near Chicago. They used the device to see everything. I know it was unhygienic. I'm sorry. You'll be all right. They used the device to remotely view what the person's seeing through their left eye. Now, we think they can hear as well. So I was tenuous about letting you know audibly what was going on at the time. I hope you don't mind. I'll explain what they're looking for in just a minute. But I've got to show you how powerful this is. This isn't something to play around with. Well, we all gotta go sometime, don't we, James? So what's the difference if it's my turn or yours? I thought you were the guy with no country, eh? Just like I was the man with no nation once. We all have our demons, don't we? No, that was real. That pen will blow up. It'll take out that door right there, that pub. You're just lucky I brought my med kit with me. Okay. Now what we have here is a normal shot glass of water from the bar. And what we have here is a tiny little pinky ring with the explosive poison from the device. See it? You remember these from the old days. Women used to use them to get to us. Now this powder, when mixed, what it does is the device creates this dust underneath the skin subdermally and then it will release it into the system and it will cause an ignition of the body's fatty tissues. Now you're a very lean man and the man who survived the attack was very lean. So it only burst in his arm. And his wife, quick thinking, pouring a water vase on the burned, charred flesh, stopped the reaction. The device malfunctioned and burned up. Because of this, I was able to operate and remove it a little more gingerly than I did in your case, not field medicine. And um, he's recovering quite nicely. You'll be just fine. So here we have the normal water. And here we have the poison. And as you can see, it causes, causes quite a deadly reaction. You could imagine if this was subdermal, what kind of reaction we would have. It's very dangerous. It turns water very highly explosive, very combustible. If there was an ignition source of fire anywhere nearby, right now, this would be a flaming ball in my hand and it would spread quickly. Your friends, it's, you can see too that it separates the oxygen and the hydrogen out. So there, it causes an even harsher reaction by feeding the initial fire reaction. So, subdermally, you have oxygen and a fuel ignition source, hydrogen. Now, that was just a little bit of poison. You could imagine if this device was creating it on a much larger scale. Oh boy. The 
voice from Spectre appear to be ahead of us again. Remote video equipment, micro technology, and they funded their operation by robbing the U.S. Treasury in Chicago. So there we are, James. Where do we go from here? And I've got more bad news. I'll place that over there for your own inspection. More bad news. No, honestly, the, the x-ray glasses work. You, They work. You can look right, right up right up her dress. It's disgusting. I, I know if these ever fell in the wrong hands, they would collapse Western civilization as we know it. Could you imagine free access to all the nudity in the world you wanted? Just think if they could put a recording device in it. I can't imagine a world like that. I don't think society could survive. But I don't want to hear that you're hanging out in the secretary's pool like we discussed earlier. Here's the worst part. I captured the device and I have it, the one I took from you. You can take that back to Q. If it activates, it will self-destruct. But even if it does, we blew this up at the lab. Yeah. This is the top of the device. You recognize that? That's right. That's Spectre. Their brand mark is all over everything in this micro technology. This was blown up a thousand times. I had it mimeographed in a larger blow up so you can see it. But what I've been trying to tell you is they're on the prowl again. The problem is like Hydra, Spectre, all of these organizations, they all lead back the tentacles, the evil, the interconnection, the spider's web. It all leads back to this. We both know that. This is in some chaotic anarchist movement to destroy Western civilization. This is the ultimate prize to bring the Dark One back. Bring the Deep One back from the Pacific Ocean to awaken him. Now you knew well that Hitler and his minions attempted with the aliens they were allied with to cause enough death and destruction to bring the Dark One back. And you know I stopped him with the help of Tesla. We were able to stop him. I have the device. If you'd like to see it, type of this. I have the Tesla device. One sensor turns it on. I'll do the disarming. There's a disarming mode you can use so you don't accidentally kill everyone by testing it. Hold on. If you pull this antenna out, it keeps it from grounding. You push one button and that basically is a sensor bar and it tells you the level of ethereal plane release of energy and then you of course release the energy. And that's the on and off switch as well. It self detects and it'll pour as much juice into a situation as needed. In the case of the Dark Lord, it 
it was like an atomic bomb going off. There's a film of it out there. I need to get in my sixth copy of it. I can't even think about it. And yes, it's true. I had Nosferatu and and he helped us, as far-fetched as that is, for his own bride. Not only Frankenstein needs a bride, so does Nosferatu. And it all comes down to this, James. They want something that we have. Spectre's trying to finance a movement in Chicago. They know I have this in my possession. And I took my gloves off, so I have to put them back on to touch it. And it's true. I have it. I stole it from the faith healer. When he died, I sent him to an asylum. He's not really dead, but the things that keep him, make him the faith healer are gone for now. But this is what they're after. They're after the Cthulhu amulet. I can't destroy it. I've tried. I can't throw it in the ocean. If I throw it in the ocean, people will just go looking for it. I don't know what to do, James. But I came here because when I discovered the subdermal device and the robbery, and I examined the object under a microscope, and I saw that a Spectre was involved. I knew just who to contact. I need your help, James, on that side of the Atlantic. If we don't stop them, I don't know what's going to happen next. They've got the means, the financing. They're putting the agents together right now. We're done for if we don't stop them soon. I think they're going to target a missile launch. I have a man in the field. His name's Felix Leiter. Felix is a good man. You can trust him. He's in the Caribbean islands right now. If you think that it might help, go down there and see him. Tell Felix you know me. Yes. Tell him about that. He'll know you're telling the truth. Though I'm ashamed of those events. I don't want to visit a hospital in England. Don't tell me I have to see a doctor. I'll be alright. It's the flight. I never was good at flying. And those long distance flights are murder. You think Hughes would get his... Howard Hughes would get the pressurization on those planes right. They make me so sick. James, you have to go see Felix later. Go to the Caribbean. Stop, Spectre. Before it's too late, James. I'm... I'm... I'm going blind. I'm going blind.